everybody and welcome to another ASMR video here on the channel. Now in this evening's video we've got a topic that I've never done before to my knowledge anyway on the channel which I find weird because it uh, it kind of perfectly feeds into both conspiracy theories as well as history slash facts uh, and that is of course butterfly effects as you can probably tell by by the title if you can read um, so i thought in this video we take a look at some instances of the butterfly effect we're going to take a look at some instances in history and then some instances of of real people giving giving their experiences of their craziest uh, butterfly effects and I mean if, if this is a popular video and there are so many different avenues we can go we can do like butterfly effects within movies tv shows etc but then also the most like outlandish uh, like ones out there like I was reading one this isn't in the video but it was something about like if the if the buffalo bills scored one more touchdown then the Kardashians wouldn't be famous or something like that. But ones like that is is another avenue we we could go down, so um apologies if you can hear my neighbours by the way. But uh let's not get too far ahead of ourselves. We're gonna take a look at uh some insane butterfly effects. And I've, <laughs> I've just realised I uh forgot to set up the Yodas and there is a Bramal Lane cushion. That is my fiance's, not mine. And then the cat, which I shall concede is indeed mine. So yes, it's creepy, I know, but I, because I don't even like cats. But it, it's a long story. Anyway, let's get into some butterfly effects. So we're going to begin with the butterfly effects that have occurred in history. Some of the more interesting examples. For those of you who don't know what it is, the, the butterfly effect is kind of like, it's a part of, I wish they would shut up, whatever they're doing, it's a part of uh, chaos theory I believe, but basically it's the idea that like the flap of a butterfly's wings could set up a chain reaction or influence something that happens, you know, far away or whatever, so it could be a small decision or like a little change in the weather could lead to drastically different outcomes uh, to if that thing didn't happen. I think that probably makes sense. So, taking a look at his room. <clears throat> Firstly, we have Ole Kirk. Ole, yeah, Ole Kirk Christiansen was a carpenter in Denmark who was struggling to make ends meet during the Great Depression. After his wife died, he was trying to take care of his kids by himself, and they loved this duck toy that he made. He started to manufacture the ducks in a factory, but the factory burned down because his kids were playing with fire and wood shavings. He was basically destitute for a while, but continued making little models of houses, vehicles and small toys. After a while they grew in popularity. And Christiansen decided to move on to making them in plastic instead. And now we have Lego. Now we have Lego. So what's the butterfly effect here? His kids enjoyed a duck toy. And that led to the invention of Lego, I guess. That's the thing. Some of them are like more obvious than others. Some of them are super far-fetched. Okay, next up, a German bureaucrat messing up on live TV led to the fall of the Berlin Wall. This East German guy, Gunter Schabowski, was set to announce new travel being allowed outside of East Germany in a few days from the announcement, and one had to wait days to get and have the special travel visa authorised. He was to announce on live government TV. He was rushed and tired, going to the press conference, and had not read the official government press 
press release before coming on live TV. Nade just handed him the paper which he read on camera. But like I said, he was unprepared, tired and rushed. So he read the first part of the release which said the government now authorises trouble freedom on live TV. A reporter then asked, so when does this take effect? He had not had the chance to read about the travel limits and visa requirements yet and had had a long day. So instead of taking several live minutes to read the whole thing, Shabowski just mumbled, as far as I know, right away. This led to thousands of East Germans massing at the wall and border checkpoints. People got angrier and angrier as they were refused passage. Finally, to avoid a riot or getting hurt themselves, one guard let some people on through. This led to a chain reaction, and so, bye bye, Berlin Wall. So, basically, the butterfly effect is a reporter didn't get enough sleep, so the Berlin Wall fell. That's good. That, that's a that's a better one than the than the lucky one in my opinion. Okay. On the night of September twenty sixth, nineteen eighty three, the Soviet orbital missile early warning system or SBRN, codenamed OKO, reported a single intercontinental ballistic missile launch from the territory of the United States. Lieutenant Colonel Stanislav Petrov, who was on duty during the incident, correctly dismissed the warning as a computer error when ground early warning radars did not detect any launches. Part of his reasoning was that the system was new and known to have malfunctioned previously. Also, a full-scale nuclear attack from the US would involve thousands of simultaneous launches, not one single missile. Later, the system reported four more ICBM launches headed to the Soviet Union, but Petrov again dismissed the reports as false. The investigation that followed revealed that the system indeed malfunctioned, and false alarms were caused by a rare alignment of sunlight on high-altitude clouds underneath the satellite's orbit. Thus, we are all now living in a world not destroyed by nuclear war because of Stanislav Petrov's independent thinking. Next one. A guy left his lab for a month. He came back and found mould growing in a Petri dish and decided to keep it rather than throw it out. The man, Alexander Fleming, the mould, penicillin which produces penicillin, among the most important drugs ever discovered. If he'd just thrown out the contaminated culture, who knows where we'd be in terms of medicine. Okay, this title is kind of wild. Hitler was responsible for the creation of anime. Well, it's World War II, actually. After the bombing on Hiroshima and Nagasaki, Japan was economically weak and people didn't even have enough food. Meanwhile, in 1952, a Japanese artist named Asamu Tezuka, who created a comic to entertain and inspire the public and help them cope with daily life. After some time when Japan came out of economic depression, and a lot of new artists started to create a lot of such comics, and the world of manga and anime came into existence. So yeah, I guess you could, technically, if Hitler doesn't invade Poland or go further back, 
Isaac Newton or Gregor Mendel, making new discoveries in the sciences, eventually leading to the Enlightenment period. So, the printing press helped Isaac Newton make his discoveries, essentially. A little Cuban boy being rescued at sea on his way to Florida created the world we now live in. In 1999, Elian Gonzalez was picked up by a fisherman floating in the ocean after the boat he and his mother were on sank. His mother died, but he survived and was taken to Miami, where he had relatives. His father still lived in Cuba, and obviously he wanted the boy back. There was a long custody battle between the Miami relatives and the boy's father, in which the Clinton administration backed sending him back to Cuba. In April of 2000, federal agents stormed the home the boy was staying in, and took him into custody and returned him to Cuba. There was absolute outrage from the Cuban-American population in Miami. This all took place in an election year in which Clinton's vice president was running for president. The Cuban-American voters did not forget what happened and they went to the polls that November. George W. Bush won the state by 500 votes. So if that whole saga had not taken place, Al Gore most certainly would have been able to get at least 500 more votes among the Cuban-American voters. And had he become president instead of Bush, there is really no way to calculate just how different the world of today would be. That's a good one. So basically, a Cuban, a Cuban boy's boat sinks and leads to the world we live in today. Um, next up, King Henry VIII of state Protestantism, serial divorcee, dissolver of the monasteries and father of Queen Elizabeth I, herself a hugely influential monarch, was not supposed to be king. Henry was the spare and his elder brother Arthur was heir to Henry VIII's throne. Uh, Henry VII, sorry. Had Arthur not died of a mystery illness, which nearly also killed Catherine of Aragon. Henry would have occupied a place in history similar to other second sons. Compare the current Prince Harry and whatever his role will be, presuming William accedes to the throne. Britain would have likely remained Catholic, very much a European country. Relations with Ireland and the continent would have played very differently and it's very likely America as we know it would be entirely different as a result. Not to mention that since Catherine of Aragon was first married to Arthur, she would not wed Henry, and so Queen Mary would never have existed. Henry wouldn't have married Anne Boleyn, as it's unlikely he would have been divorced and on the rebound looking for a new queen, and was also intending to marry another, and once he wouldn't have had any need to step in to stop it. Queen Elizabeth I would thus not be born. So English history absolutely pivots on Arthur's death. Who knows what the world would be like if he hadn't died. Next, a virus caused World War II. Woodrow Wilson was sick with the epic flu of 1918 during the negotiation process for the Treaty of Versailles after the First World War. He would have pushed for less punitive provisions on Germany, but he was largely absent from the process due to his illness. Instead, the treaty imposed incredibly destructive restrictions on Germany, leading to a collapsed economy, resentment, and a nation clamouring for a strong leader to make things right again in Germany. Enter Hitler, stage right. When Japan and Germany finally lost World War II, they had done 
weapons of manufacturing ability, yet were banned from building a military for however long. They looked at Detroit's success in the auto industry and approached the market each in their own way. To this day, we have luxury and economy cars from across two different oceans competing with our domestic vehicles because they lost. Next, duct tape. The Watergate burglars put a piece of duct tape on a lock on a door at the Watergate apartments so the door would not lock shut. The security guard noticed that tape, opened the door and called the burglars. The rest is history. Brought down an American president and changed history. movies ever made directly led to the rise of one of the most beloved actors of our generation, and he wasn't even in the film. When Canon Films bought the rights to the Superman movies, they really wanted Christopher Reeve to play the part one more time. He reluctantly agreed, but only on one condition that Canon make his pet project street smart. About Roboto, he becomes famous after faking a story. Superman is at six, needless to say, was a disaster of legendary proportions, in no small part because Cannon slashed the budget by more than half just before filming started. They did make Street Smart, which got decent reviews, but fizzled at the box office. Critics generally agreed that there was one standout performer in Street Smart, playing a violent, murderous pimp. This actor was best known, if at all, for having been on the kids' show, The Electric Company, in the 70s. But his performance in Street Smart was a revelation, and earned him his first Oscar nomination. And that's why Morgan Freeman probably wouldn't have a career today, if not for that Superman movie. <laughs> See, I like that one. I think I'd really like to do, like, a butterfly effects in movies, or, like, it can be to do with actors, but also within, like, I'm sure there's crazy, like, MCU butterfly effects that super fans have, like, drawn lines from. I think that would be quite cool. And so, those were a few instances from history. We're now going to take a look at some more personal stories. So, craziest butterfly effects from people's small decisions. So, this first one is titled my existence. Uh, when my dad was about 20, he needed a phone number, so he called the operator from a payphone. She gave him the number, he hung up, and she accidentally refunded the money back to the payphone. She called the payphone back and asked him if he could put the money back in, which he did, and hung up again. She accidentally refunded the money again, and had to call back again to ask him to put the money back in. He did, and hung up again. She was so flustered, she refunded the money again, and called back again, and my father got to chatting with her, and got her number. They set up a date, which she actually stood him up for. Then she forgot his name when he called her again. Then they actually got coffee, and four years later were married. This coming August, it'll be 50 years for them. If my dad didn't need that phone number, or my mum didn't get so flustered, I wouldn't be here. <laughs> and they've edited it saying, my dad still calls it the most expensive phone call he ever made. <laughs> that's good. That's, a, that's such a good meeting story. Okay, the older I get, the more I'm constantly cognizant of the vast cascade of seemingly insignificant decisions and actions that led me to where I am today. For example, a decision 25 years ago to change a refrigerator light bulb before going out resulted in it my being at the wrong time and place so as to get mugged, which resulted in my decision to move out of the city I'd been living in, which resulted in me meeting my wife and from there to having all my kids and the whole shebang. I would have had a different whole life had I not 
change that light bulb that afternoon, but the path to the present leads through that similarly trivial decision. This person has won for another person. In 2014, I was coaching my Dwins' rec flag football team. My oldest player has a younger sister who came to watch a practice. We will call her Grace. She saw my daughter on the team, told her dad, there's a girl on that team. And the next week, she was on my roster. Her and my daughter became fast friends. While the flag football season was wrapping up, I was putting together my roster for the upcoming rec volleyball team. At the end of one of my practices, my daughter invited Grace to play on the volleyball team together. Grace had played the previous season and not cared for it too much. Grace agreed and played from rec to club, then to high school, with my daughter. My daughter and I watched Grace as captain lead her team to a state championship and she has a D1 scholarship for volleyball next ball. Next up, my parents dream was to have a famous child. When my older sister's figure skating career ended in her early twenties, the spotlight shifted to me. I was a fine oboist and took private voice lessons with intent to audition for the local music faculty. In any case, there was a lot of pressure, and while I was successful at school and classical music, it was never enough. At 17, before senior year began, my sister gifted me a kitten. My parents had given her due in her senior year, and the implication was that it was my turn. When my sister dropped me off, my parents locked me out, saying that if I wanted my own bed, I needed my own place. So I found one that night. I worked three jobs to support myself through senior year and graduated with entrance scholarships to both of the local universities. <laughs> Wait, so I'm kind of failing to see the, see the butterfly effect is what? Your parents wanted a famous child, and that led to you living independently and getting a cat. <laughs> okay, <laughs> this one sounds a bit similar to the last one, but I couldn't afford a music degree while living on my own, even with entrance scholarships. And good thing, entering the workforce showed me how much I love active jobs. Three years later, I enrolled in college and became an industrial mechanic, to my parents' great shame. After a few years of this, I landed a sweet contract where I work on Saturdays and Sundays but receive a full week's pay. Although I am living a beacon of disappointment, I comfort myself aware that my 100k a year job, two day worksheet and two cats. Oh, this is... that makes more sense. This is the same story. But this article has just put it as a new number. <laughs> that makes sense. Because they've summarised, being kicked out over a kitten saved me from wasting my years chasing an, impro an improbable career just to please my parents. That makes more sense. I rescind my, uh, my negative comments. <laughs> okay. I sent a friend from secondary school who I had a huge crush on, a message saying happy birthday. A couple of years later, after we left school, did the whole, we'll have to catch up soon thing, not expecting much. He replied with, how about Monday? I saw him that Monday for a coffee. Next month will be our sixth anniversary. Best thing that ever happened to me. My friends joke, I am a queen of escaping the frenzy. I was given due star dates for an entry-level job in a large organisation. The date I chose to start led to working in a small but high-profile team, so I got lots of exposure with senior management, and I became the can-do guy who'd fix a million tiny problems. That recognition led to promotions, a fantastic career, further professional qualifications, and working overseas for several years. I also met my best
best friend and my partner. If I'd chosen the other date, I'd have been sent to a data processing pool and been fairly anonymous. About ten years ago, there were no PC games to play, so I tried using Windows XP's Movie Maker out of boredom. I didn't know that I'm going to enjoy it and take it seriously. Now I'm currently working on a TV film production as a video editor. So, my lack of in installed games on my computer led to the career I have today. I feel like we start off so high with the uh, with the phone booth one. Um, next, my wife got an email from her old colleagues the day we returned home from our honeymoon, asking if she wanted to star in a short film they were doing for fun. She said sure, and asked if I could come along. She knew I had an interest in movies, but that, that at the time I worked in life insurance and was miserable. It was more than an interest. I'd always wanted to make films, but never made the right connections with people and didn't know where to start. I made friends with the producer of that short film my wife was in, and eleven years later filmmaking and video production is my career. I've shot feature films, short films, video for TV and web, and all over the world because of that one email to my wife completely changed our lives. Made a last minute decision to go to a friend's divorce party and met my wife. That, <laughs> that's, that's the story. <laughs> Divorce party, that must have been such like a miserable <laughs> marriage to <laughs> celebrate a divorce. Anyway, I don't know why I found that so funny. Okay. The other day I was driving home from work. Traffic was light and I was behind a car with a number plate that started KFD. Decided to duck through KFC drive through for chippies with extra salt as a little treat to myself. They took forever to bring them out, and by the time they finally did, traffic had slowed to a complete halt. I need to get over a bridge that's normally six lanes, which has now been reduced to one. Turns out it's due to a massive collision involving several cars. When I finally get to the point where I'm driving past, I notice the number plate on one of the cars. That same KFD number plate. If I hadn't stopped to get off chips, I'm fairly sure I'd have been in a major collision. Summary, KFC chippies with extra salt saved my life. That's what I'm talking about. That's a good one. <laughs> if he hadn't read that number plate, and if KFD hadn't reminded me KFC, he'd have never bought chips, and then he'd have never gone off the road, and then he would have been involved in an accident. That is a, that is a bit of life hack. <laughs> Okay. I finished working half an hour earlier and I was sent home by my boss, an old friend, on holiday in our hometown. Texted me out of the blue and asked me if I could pick up her American friend because she could not make it in time. And I was the only one who spoke English. Took a shower, shaved my head, picked her up and ten months later I married her. Blimey, that's quick. If you know, if you know, you know, I guess. My husband, he found out after 18 years that his mum's side of the family was Spanish, not Mexican. He found this interesting and changed his country to Spain on MySpace, instead the US where he really was. Meanwhile in Australia, I was helping my friend find Spanish people to add as a friend as she was learning the language. I came across my now husband and decided, it, decided to send him a friend request as well. We got along really well and met in person up to three years. I've been together eleven years and married for seven. But if he didn't change his country to Spain, 
we'd never know each other existed. That's good as well. Alright, we're gonna do one more. Oh, it's the last one in this article anyway. So when I was in 8th grade, 13 years old, I had a really long bus ride home, so I would have passed the time by reading. One day I faced the very serious situation of nothing to read, and a minute to grab something in the library. And for whatever reason I randomly grabbed a book on astronomy. That book was amazing and grabbed me like nothing else had before. I remember being excited to realise every astronomer on Earth was 13 years old too. And that was a career, oh 13 years old once too, they're not all 13. And that was a career you could actually do even if you were from Pittsburgh. Anyway, today I'm a professional astronomer who studies gigantic space explosions for a living. There was a lot, that was a lot of work to get from that one quick moment, randomly picking up a book from the library. That's very cool. There were some good ones in there, some of them were just like relatively straightforward chain reactions, but some of them were definitely uh, interesting. A good, a good place to end this video would be if I could give you my own um, chain reaction um, butterfly effect. Um, but I'm but I'm struggling. Do you know, one one might be, and this is probably hella long-winded, but realistically they're all long-winded, but without uh, picking, wait, picking a certain day to go and watch my favourite MCU movie led to me meeting my future wife slash current Beyonce. Kind of. Because we were going to go and watch... I was in my first year of uni, and we were going to go watch Thor Ragnarok in the week, and for whatever reason we didn't, and we ended up just going Friday night instead. And then when we got back from the movie, um, my partner was visiting her uni friend, and she just up and we got back to be stood in the hallway talking to other people in my flat uh, when we got back and then we got talking and that was the first time we met. That's kind of rubbish. <laughs> I'm just trying to draw like the most convoluted chain reactions. I wonder if there's there, there's got to be one one for the channel because there was a, there was a video I watched. I think it was like an ASMR football video where it reminded me that I had once done it because for those of you who don't know I made this channel like years and years ago and it was Whispers Football I don't know if any of my uh, original audience are still there um, but I made it, basically some people found it I denied that it was me because my face wasn't on camera and um, stopped uploading because I was a little, a little pussy basically <laughs> Oh, I can't for the life of me remember what video I was watching. Um, I don't know if it was strictly an ASMR video or like, just like, it might have been just an Abembez video or something, and then he randomly like whispered into the mic, and it almost like awakened this epiphany in me. And I was like, holy, holy shit, like, I used to have an ASMR channel, because I only did it for like three months or something. Um... And I told my partner about it, and then she was like, you should start it again, and now here we are. So I guess if I wasn't, if I had never watched that football YouTube video, that FIFA YouTube video, I wouldn't be sat here right now. And the embarrassed memory of Whispers Football would still be very deep. <laughs> uh, yeah, I don't know. If you guys have any interesting butterfly effects, surely someone out there has a better one than me because they were pretty relatively bad, but let me know. Maybe they were okay. But yes, uh, that is going to do it for this evening's video. I really hope you did enjoy it. Obviously, there are going to be loads and loads more butterfly effects out there, so let me know if you would like to see more. But uh, that is going to do it for tonight's video, so thank you so much for watching, as always. If you